Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today is October 12th. It is 2 p.m. Japan time. And as usual, I'd like to report to you today's world news in a 10 minute YouTube video. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan, I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy, I traveled the world, came back to Tokyo, Japan recently, and just started YouTube, Japanese channel in January, and just started the English channel you're watching right now. Only a few months ago, would appreciate if you press subscribe and follow me going forward. Today, the main topic and news is Trump has told his supporters he has tested totally negative for coronavirus. He is back on the campaign trail. As of tomorrow, U.S. time, on Monday, he will be holding a rally already in Florida. This is quite big political news worldwide as he is completely coronavirus-free according to his statements. Before we get into this main topic today, first I'd like to highlight what's going on today globally in stock markets then go on to economic news and society news and then other types of political news today and then finally i will finish with the main topic today which is trump is coronavirus free and an update on the election as there's a few states right now that are changing right now in terms of these swing states and i want to give you guys an update so let's get started first and foremost guys let's do a quick update on stock markets and what is happening across the world in terms of stock markets right now uh, U.S. markets are still closed, so uh, European markets are going to open in a few hours from now. And the only markets that are currently open are the Asian markets. Now, in the Asian markets, we see the Nikkei 225 is down today, 0.3 percent. The Topics is down today, 0.33 percent. The Hang Seng Hong Kong is up 2.03 percent. CSI China up 2.44 percent. ASX Australia up 0.4 percent, and MSCI Asia Emerging Markets up 0.1. Uh, no guys there is actually a lot of news out of china today i'm going to do this in a separate video there's news about their currency regime and there's news about new reforms coming up with a big speech so i'm going to do this in a separate video as it is big news let's now move on to economic news of the day economic news today in japan uh, we had core machinery orders unexpectedly rose by 0.2 percent month over month in august of 2020 slowing from a 6.3 percent rise in july but beating the market consensus of a one percent fall gross growth is mainly boosted by petroleum and coal products and non-ferrous metals so mainly due to commodities and manufacturing basis so this was a good economic news japan needed this again guys please see my video from yesterday japan still has a long way to go in the recovery but uh this is good news that at least we're seeing some better news in the machinery sector at the moment Otherwise, guys, today, not much is going on in terms of economic news. Uh, again, we're seeing some uh, news out of uh, Malaysia. Malaysia retail sales drop at a faster pace and Malaysia industrial output growth eases sharply. So things are not good in Malaysia at the moment. Uh, Guru note, guys, that the main economic news coming out this week will be the bank earnings report especially big banks like jp morgan citigroup these will be reporting uh they've been highlighted a lot recently in the news as i said last week fincen reports and citigroup with their new fine so let's see how these earnings look and let's see how the stock market will digest this type of news let's now move on to society news of the day society news of the day i want to be highlighting what's going on with coronavirus daily new cases today reported daily new worldwide cases for october 11th was 278,013. For daily new deaths they reported was october 11th at uh, 3874 both numbers came down significantly again guys given the fact that this is october 11th data uh i believe that this probably has some weekend effect not that much most of this is probably coming from october 10th so it is saturday yeah it's probably the weekend data so we can't take this data completely seriously unfortunately uh probably the number of testing is a lot lower uh even though it is the weekend we still want to look at the data seen in india we saw the daily new number of cases today around 68,000. in the us around 42,000. in france around 16,000. russia around 13,000. uk around 13,000. argentina around 10,000. now colombia belgium netherlands italy ukraine mexico indonesia poland iran anywhere between 3,000 to 8,000 each guys do you notice something very big here right away i noticed something huge brazil all of a sudden is only 3,000 cases. This was one of the biggest countries. It is one of the biggest uh, cumulative number of cases in the world at 5 million. All of a sudden, it's only 3,000 cases. I haven't seen this in months, months, months. Uh, Brazil has been around 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 range, even on the weekends. And now all of a sudden, it's 3,000. Again, due to the weekend, the testing is a lot lower. Nonetheless, this is still 
huge news, I think, for Brazil in terms of the number of cases. France, even though it's the weekend, we're still seeing numbers are quite high. So I think that this warrants a lot of caution. France, UK, Russia, especially Argentina. These four countries are going up the, uh, the fastest right now in terms of daily new cases worldwide. Let's move on to other types of news today. Other types of news today we're seeing, uh, I'm going to talk about this later in the video, but China did a big move to curb its uh, yuan strength and the FX, making it cheaper to bet against the currency. Uh, I'm going to talk about this later. The central bank made a movement today. Apple is about to hold the most significant iPhone event in years today. On Tuesday, Apple is holding a launch event, which will reveal this year's iPhone lineup. So this will be definitely interesting to watch. Uh, and other types of political news today, uh, we're seeing more and more news, especially I thought this was very interesting. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Arizona uh, in the U.S., but Arizona has usually been Republican. Uh, John McCain, very, very famous senator, once a Republican candidate for the president. He went up against Barack Obama. Uh, he has been sort of dominating the Arizona uh, political structure, and Arizona has been Republican for a long time, not just from the Senate, but also in the state house. Now, it looks like this time, uh, Arizona, not only does it look like it's going to be probably presidential wise, it's going to be leaning towards blue, which is leaning towards a uh, Democrat, but also the state house. So local politics looks like it's going to be become democratic. And it might be the first time in 50 years that the entire legislature in Arizona will turn democratic, which in turn, well, sorry, Democrat. So this would be quite big news, uh, indicating a big change in a state that has predominantly been red throughout history. Uh, finally, guys, uh, do note that there's some polling data out and an economist is showing interestingly here that even though most polling data across the uh, the world is showing that Biden is ahead of Trump by more than 10 points, uh, the economist has sort of an interesting article talking again about how there's a lot of uh, do, 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 do. differential partisan non-response. This basically means that differential partisan non-response People who support Trump, because the polls are going lower and lower, they will not actively answer phone calls. Uh, it basically means that when the person that you support is not doing well, you're less inclined to be energetic, less inclined to be sort of uh, excited to answer polling questions. Uh, so this is statistically normal for every presidential election, not just for Trump versus Biden. Uh, it's a little bit different from the silent majority, silent polls, where a lot of people just don't want to say that they support Trump because maybe they're embarrassed. Uh, it's a little bit different from that statistic. But uh, just interestingly here, economists are saying that they see uh, Biden by about nine points instead of 11 points, which is the worldwide right now average at the moment. OK, so now let's move on to today's main piece of news today. Today's main piece of news is that Trump tells supporters he's tested totally negative for coronavirus. President Trump on Sunday in U.S. time said in a phone call to a group of supporters that he's tested totally negative for the coronavirus, uh, despite White House physician Sean Connolly releasing no statements yet on the president's health. Guys, this is from Fox News. So again, I'm using conservative, usually uh, Republican supporting news right now. Uh, so he said he's been testing totally negative right now and he's going to be out in Florida tomorrow working hard. Uh, do, 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 do. Interestingly, saying this, this is from this new here state. Trump says he's immune uh, on Fox News with Maria Bartiromo. She's a very famous newscaster. I love her. Uh, and he said he was immune and he's in good shape to fight battles. Uh, it doesn't seem that, you know, becoming immune is probably very, very difficult to see. According to Dr. Alba Cohen, infectious disease specialist in department chairman at Yale School of Public Health, uh, it's presumptuous to say you're immune for a lifetime, but at least for a few months, it's probably the case that he uh, will have some sort of immunity. Uh, but he also noted, the same expert noted that those who have had severe cases of the disease should be isolated for 20 days. And Trump was treated with the steroid dexamethasone, which is normally reserved for patients with severe COVID. Uh, noting that if he did have a severe case of the virus, he should actually be isolated for 20 days. And it has not been 20 days uh, since his isolation started. Uh, I believe it actually started on around October 2nd. So 20 days would actually be the 22nd of October. Uh, so we don't know whether it was severe or not severe. And we still don't know uh, for sure. Uh, the doctors have not released yet a statement saying that he has tested negative or not. So it's a little bit of a uh, gray situation where we don't know what's going on. But nonetheless, he's got a, got a very aggressive campaign schedule going, which, to be honest, I would do the same if I were him. Uh, he's going to be in Florida on Monday. Then he's going to Iowa and Pennsylvania later in the week. Now, 
Florida, Pennsylvania, very, very important states, guys. Florida, again, 29 electoral votes. This is still a gray area. We don't know. No, neither one is in the lead yet, Biden or Trump. Pennsylvania, Biden's taking a big lead, about 7.3 points right now. Trump's got to take this back. If he wants even a chance of winning, he has to take this back. And he's got to take Ohio. And he's also got to go to Texas. If I were him, I know Iowa's important because that's where usually a lot of the Polls initially come out during the election, so it's sort of an inter it's it's an important state, even though electorally wise it's small. But Texas, he's in danger right now in Texas right now, and he's got to take this. He's got to make sure that he takes Texas. If he doesn't take Texas, it's game over. And right now, it's too close. It's way too close right now. I would fire him. I would make sure that he goes to Texas earlier on. Uh, hit Florida, Pennsylvania, Texas, Ohio then start to swing around to some other states and at the very end hit again go back to florida pennsylvania texas ohio these four are really going to determine trump's fate and if i were him i would be going in that direction uh again i am bipartisan i am neutral uh just saying if i were him that's the schedule that i would be going on he's got a pretty aggressive schedule for a 74 year old who's just hospitalized uh but again he's going to be pushing the limits for the next few days it's so guys, that's the main news on the day. Uh, thanks for watching my channel. Please subscribe to my channel going forward. And I appreciate if you uh, send my uh, links out, uh, my channel link out to any of your friends and buddies as a recommendation. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have a, guys have a wonderful day and look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.